I forgot that today was Hollow's Eve and everybody's out trick or treating. So I guess um, I'll be running solo tonight. But that's all good. That's all good, man. I hope everybody's enjoying their their Hallows Eve. But that's all good. That's all good, man. I hope everybody's enjoying their Hallows Eve. What's going on, trusty? Greetings, everyone. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I thought I was going to be running solo because it was Halloween. And I was like, oh, man, I forgot that tonight is Halloween. Yeah, I heard you say that just as I was getting ready to click the link. Yeah, I was like, oh. I said, well, you're probably going to be running solo. It's okay. It's no, okay. those of us on the East Coast finished up a while ago. Oh, yeah, that's right. On and the West Coast, it's a whole different story. Yeah, we live down um, a private lane, so we never get any trick-or-treaters. So um, some of our neighbors uh, decided to set up at the end of the lane. They took uh, camp chairs and wagons and some lights and pizza and <laughs> and beer, and then they had the candy <laughs> for the kids. So we were oh, all set uh, up at the end of the lane. We joined them and had a good time. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Lady Celtic Moon says coughs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how you doing, Lady Celtic Moon? Hello, Lady Celtic Moon. Hope everything is going well for you. We're sitting here chilling, 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 chilling. I was like, should I go on or not? It's Halloween. And then I was, then I was like, oh, yeah. If I don't go on now, I'm not going to go on for the rest of the week. So... Might as well just go ahead and get it out the way, you know. I hope everybody, like I said, I hope everybody's doing well for those that are watching. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. It's myself and the miraculous trusty psychic. Miraculous, huh? <laughs> miraculous that I managed to show up. Nah, nah. Yeah, I mean, you always show up. Uh, not always, but... Yeah, most of the time. Even when you're not feeling well, you'll be like, oh, you know, I think I think I can come. Well, I wasn't feeling well a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I ate a bunch of candy or anything. It's getting chill. I don't know if it's getting chilly on your side. It is definitely chilly here. Oh, my gosh. It was 81 degrees today. 81? Yes. And it was warm outside for the trick-or-treaters. But we had a really strong breeze blowing. And they say it's supposed to drop down to 57 tomorrow. Yeah, uh, Miraculous, says Josh Chris. Our Lady Celtic Moon says, how's your wife? My wife or trustee's wife? My wife is fine. I never mentioned my wife. Must be your wife. Yeah, my wife is fine. She's doing well. I saw her. She was talking about nobody loves her. Aww. As soon as as soon as that happens, she got a phone call from somebody. She's Kiki King in the background. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Somebody loves you. Somebody always loves somebody. Yeah, so we're doing the same thing we're always doing, you know, multicasting, blasty, blasty, blast. You know, I was about to to maybe stop one of the streams, but eh. We got it under control. Yet the miraculous trusty sidekick. Miraculous. Miraculously awesome. So what are you working on today? Still the same? Uh, See, it's uh -oh. spinning circles. Spinning oh, you circles. You're back. Hey, how you doing? What's up, Shinobi? Oh, Marcus Givens. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, had uh, submitted a page to a friend to get her opinion. Oh, yeah. That's nice. You get any, uh, any feedback yet? Not yet. I think she's looking at it. Well, that's what you want, right? Yeah. <laughs> and there you go. Can't complain. 
Can't complain. Yeah. Who's listening to TV? Hold on a minute. There's a game on. Oh. Oh, it's a Sunday. It is Thursday night football. NBA, actually. I just didn't. Well, I had a TV on because of uh, because they they had a a storm warning earlier. But it sounds like things have calmed down. Storm warning in the east. Yeah, I know East Coast. It was raining like crazy earlier. I could hear it by my window. So Lady Celtic News said, um, I got uh, one of those Elgato deck. Oh, nice. You want to start streaming games? What did she get? An Elgato. Oh. It's a game capture card. Oh, I may have seen it. Oh, no, I didn't see it. Yeah. But yeah, if she has that, she can. Works with the. like with the Xbox, the Switch, oh, PS4, you know, yeah, it's a good way to uh to stream games if you're a console player, right? I like it. Wants to get a room set up. Yeah, that's nice. Right. I like it. I got one somewhere. Yeah. I got two because I didn't know which one was better. I don't know which one I like better. Right. But then I started streaming off of uh, off of my PC, so I'm like, ah, I might not really need the Elgados. Right. Oh, hold on. Oh, so now we got a drawing screen set up. Yeah, I figured I'd keep myself occupied while I wait. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, she says, "What is that, Trusty?" What the Olympus template? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't get too involved. I'm like, oh, okay. One uh, back when I was working as an assistant for um, a couple of inkers, one of them had. These two notebooks of every size ellipse template, small and large. One one small notebook, one large. And I thought, that's awesome. I got to have that. So I ordered one from some drafting supply place. So I'm set for ellipse templates. Of course, if cool. you're doing digitally, you don't need this. But <laughs> hey, you yeah. just can Oh, the motor thing? That's an eraser, electric eraser. <laughs> the unbreathable skunk girl says, oh, oh, oh. Wow. Yeah, that's an electric eraser. That's that's also. Also, a holdover from drafting, the mm -hmm. drafting architecture days. Got a nice motor in here, and you put the erasers. Well, you're supposed to stick them in the other end. They're really long, but you know, you see, I've used most of this one. But it's great because, you know, it spins around. You can just erase tiny little areas instead of having to scrub, scrub, scrub back and forth. Right. Yeah, it works pretty good, but it'll also burn a hole in your paper. Yeah, you got to be careful with it. Yeah, Trusty and I share, share that profession. I once, I once was a draftsman a long time ago. Way long time ago. In a galaxy far away. Oh, yeah. At least in an island far away from me right now. Right. Because I am nowhere near that island. Uh, the unbreathable skunk. How the dear? How, oh, Lady Kelty Moon saying hello to the unbreathable skunk girl. Everybody's happy talking around. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. We're just chilling here on a on a Halloween evening. Oh yeah. So this kid came to the door dressed as Gloria Gaynor. 
Yeah. First, yeah. I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. Trust that. Yeah. My wife told me that one tonight. I got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> I was like, I don't think any kids know who Gloria Gaynor is. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. That's the funny part of the joke. No. <laughs> That's. <laughs> yeah, I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nah, I ain't mad at it, though. Oh, damn, I didn't realize... Who this was in the background. So they have a very, very sparse group over in drawn and quartered fan edition tonight. I don't yeah, know. I was I was worried if they were gonna get anybody. You know, I don't know. I don't pay attention. Well, the topic tonight was supposed to be gore porn, and I was like, huh, who wants to no. see Al Gore getting all sweaty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't think anybody. Well, it is Halloween. That would give you nightmares, I guess. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that because that would be by far the scariest thing I've ever seen. Can y'all hear my wife laughing in the background? I heard somebody laughing. Yeah, that's my wife. She's uh, in all the way in the other side of the house, but... Must be watching something on TV or... No, she's talking to someone on the phone. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't that realize that her voice yeah. carries. She's like She thinks like she's the whisperer, the, the quietest whisperer in the world. And I've been trying to tell her to close the door. She's like, no, don't close your door. You're going to suffocate in that room. I'm like, yeah, but you know. What's the alternative? Someone said right. a poke fire's in the house? Oh, that's a, there's someone I haven't uh, talked with in a long time. Yeah, you know, she she's a, she's a little trickster, the poke fire. What she, po she, what she post? So she's, she's a flash uh, villain? Mm-hmm. <laughs> If I guess whatever that means, I don't know anything about DC. I had three about Rice Krispies. Well, it's see. part of. Uh... Go ahead. Eminence, look, I made her smile. <laughs> Let's see. With my editor, she said Starfire was too serious looking. I said, okay. Oh yeah, she's. Uh, she's the expert. See. Yeah, let's see what they said. Let's see. Anyone get trick or treaters? I know we we turn off the porch light. That's the, that's the bat signal. Dot to come. The bat signal is not a toy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Damn it, Alfred. Marania says happy Halloween to everybody. Hi, Marania. This is not my good one. And Marcus Gibbons is dropping cheeseburgers for Trusty. Woo! And Popeye says she's finished the rough draft of Relentless. There's a lot going on. Oh, good. There we go. I've got I've got two of these. One is really messed up, and the other one's pretty good. So it's like going, wow, they're like these little nicks in this one. This is not working out. This is not my good one. Why do I even <laughs> keep this one around? I don't know. Because <laughs> you're you're like every other guy, you know. We're like, oh no, it still has a use. Yeah. Swatting flies, maybe into the trash. Yeah, and then you realize you need to throw it away, and then you eventually throw it away. Eventually, throw it away. All right. Eventually. I don't know eventually. if you guys can hear that. My DVD drive is going crazy. So I'm gonna take care of this. Uh, wait, what? This drawing is so confusing. What? Uh, there's this pencils that I'm working on. Oh. It's so confusing. It's a Jim Lee piece, you know. Yeah, his his his, his pencils can be confusing at times. Before he asked, it was hot dogs for dinner tonight. <laughs> Did they yeah. taste like mustard and bigotry? <laughs> mustard and bigotry. It makes sense. It, it's a red. It's an X Men red thing. Oh, at least Trusty got the joke. I got it.
Oh my goodness. Yeah. When we were out at the street, um, there was traffic coming from both directions, which is, is rare, you know, at night on our street. And so uh, one of the guys went over, picked up the chair that was in the middle of the street, pulled it off to the side, went game off. <laughs> game on. I was the only one who got it. Nice. I'm still the only one who gets it. That's fair. Yeah. That's one of the painful truths of comedy. You always take shots from folks who just don't get the joke. I don't take shots. I just don't get it. Let's see. Lady Celtic Moon says, I'm getting hungry now. Marania says, mustard, ketchup, no bigotry. <laughs> That's what she says. Yeah. What are you going to do? I love I'll take her word on it. I'll take her word on it. That's what I'll do. Let's see. <laughs> it's a quiet evening tonight. Quiet evening tonight. I wonder who else is in this drawing that I don't see. I just found Superman, Batman, Green Lantern. Does he got anywhere anybody else hidden in here? Mm -hmm. Sure was a lot. Anybody got any big plans for the weekend? Uh, or, not really. Ugh. Do you always work weekends? Yes. Uh. I'm just wondering if I. I'm just wondering if I have to train anyone this week. A wrong day, your dad. Well, I'm just going to have to deal with that. Sally the bug is going around. It has bit me good, but I'm here to lift my mood. Yay! Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're not feeling so well. That is no bueno. Gary huh. Shipman in the house visiting? Hey, wow. How you doing, Mr. Shipman? Hope everything is going well for you. Everybody loves Gary. <laughs> oh man, that uh, that zombified uh, Titan, the first one that, that you did for last night that you started on the stream, your stream, that was great, Gary. That was really nice. <laughs> Yeah, that whole Titans thing sounds like a real nice concept. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. You know, nah. that should be pretty cool. C Collect in the house saying, hey fam, what's going on, C Collects? Okay, so my friend got back to me on the page and she <laughs> says she thinks it shows a lot more in character with the drama setting and balance. Whatever so that it means. looks like I'm on the right. I have no idea. Hold on. Uh, I have no idea what that means either. It seems like she's impressed with it, but. That's good. See, Collect says he's trick or treating with the kids, so he's walking around, listening in. As the kids trick or treat, 
All right. So what was when you're a kid, what was the thing you hated to get trick or treating? Oh, let's see. Just about any candy with nuts in it because I'm not too fond of nuts. Are you allergic? I just never liked them. Okay. So basically, everything, so pretty much when I was little, everything got eaten except for the Snickers. Hmm. I know what E hated to get. What was that? York peppermint patties. They don't, they don't give those away, though. Junior minutes. <laughs> I've never seen anybody give those away, to be honest with you. That would be an interesting yeah. thing. Yeah. Your peppermint Steve. patties are actually pretty good. Ugh. Uh, he doesn't like the uh, chocolate mint flavor. Uh, I do not, sir. Uh, I was never too fond of uh, Mary Jane's or Bit of Honey. Mary Jane's were okay. They were a little bit too chewy, but other than that. What about now and later? Oh, my oh yeah. Oh, especially the banana flavors, which is kind of odd because I don't eat actual bananas. Yeah, no, those are always good. Non-perishable candies. It yeah. seems like them things lasted forever. Yeah. When I was at the when I was at the boys' club, everybody somebody always had an hour later. Love those things. Yeah. And, and the ones, the candies, the hard candies that had that uh, like powdery center that once you got to it, it would start to really sizzle and sort of sting. <laughs> Right. I don't remember what they were called, but I like those. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, anything with licorice or coconut was a no for me, says Mariah. Oh. I'm Mariah Volcanon. And the Unbeatable Skunk Girl said, wish we had trick-or-treaters. Love seeing the kids all dressed up, but no one wants to walk oh. up our hill. That's, That's why Nanny chose that hill. So no one will walk up it. <laughs> Get off the house on the hill. No wonder nobody comes up there for Halloween. Yeah, and then he's like, nope, I don't want no kids coming up here for Halloween. I'm going, I'm going to live up the hill. Get off my lawn. Yeah. Uh, what are you supposed to I hate uh, almond joys with coconut, but I love licorice. I love some yeah. licorice. I'm not a coconut fan either. I like the taste all right because I like coconut rum and I like coconut milk and like Thai food and let's see what else. food. But I do not like the texture of coconut. Yeah, yeah, I don't do that. Like, yeah, me neither. Let's see what a uh, thickness of five does with that panel line. Yeah, so uh, I don't, I don't, I like like coconut water, but I don't like the coconut. Is I guess the meat is what you call it, even though it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like that either. Yeah. But the coconut water, fine. I enjoy that a lot. I got some in the fridge, as a matter of fact. <laughs> she says they pretty much go to malls here anyway. And Maranya's asking Shinobi if he's saving. Um, I'm saving. I know you can't see it, but it's uh, I'm saving. Yeah, he's saving. Probably because I didn't set this up beforehand, but oh well. Mary Ann is costing Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, he's the unbreathable Santa. <laughs> Dog, dog, yeah. The unbreathable Santa. Yeah, that's what we call him. Uh, now you've given me an idea. Nice drawing <laughs> with Skunk Girl with her pheromones affecting Santa. Uh, that would be awesome. Why not? They affect everyone else. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How the skunk? How the unbreathable skunk girl stole Christmas. <laughs> uh, that sounds promising. That sounds promising. Yeah. Now, she's, fresh coconut. Oh, go ahead. She steals every. She steals everything else. Yeah. She said, "Now, fresh coconut 
I can eat a few chunks every few years, but it's way too much effort to try for that. Okay, so who watched the AQ last night and who watched Drawing Fire? I would be a negative on both. I didn't watch it. E- I didn't watch it either. Uh, anything with y'all, anything with y'all Flash involved, I stay away from. I don't even know who the dude is. You're lucky. <laughs> I watched DNQ last night, and then yeah. I listened to Drawing Fire this morning at work for a bit, just so I can, you know, see what the, the other one was like. Well, see what you the hoopla was it. about. Hmm. See what the hoopla was about. It was much ado about nothing. Yeah, that just kind of figures. It just wasn't. I, I didn't enjoy it. It's, it's it's good in theory, right? But but in reality, it's a steaming pile of crap. I don't know. I didn't watch it. I can't say. But like I said, I don't. I don't make efforts. I don't make efforts to watch it either. Yeah, I get that. It's not like I make a concentrated effort to be like, man, I really need to know what's going on on Drawn and Quarter. I never. I think I've only watched one episode of Drawn and Quarter. One, and that's the one that they invited Gary on at the last minute, and he did his Captain America, oh. and that was the last time I watched Drawn. And that's Quarter. the only time you watched. That's the only time I that's watched. The only time you watched. The only, the one, the only, the only, only time, time you watched, and only because of Mister Shipman. And I think we lost uh, Trusty. No. I think he didn't like that, so he left. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. What's going on, Mr. Paolo Romero Arts? You can find me on t- uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, all the social medias, uh, triggering uh, the SJW on Twitter, uh, Drawing Sexy Girls, uh, and Cheesecake. Uh, Paolo Romero, gracias. <laughs> Trusty said, my computer shut down. We kind of figured. Yeah. Those pesky computers. You know, when you were no longer talking, we've kind of figured that's uh, that's what that happened. The case. Yeah. You're going to have to start a trust for fundy. Uh, fund for trusty. Uh, Pablo Meta 60 Tico. Yeah, we see. You didn't watch when I was on? Nope. <laughs> no, no. You got to think yeah. about it. Because remember, I go to church on Wednesdays. Yeah, I forget that little detail. I go to Bible study on Wednesdays. So I'm on the West Coast, and that means by the time I get home. Oh, no. no. Uh-oh. Is that a Josh Chris Hart? No. <laughs> if I live close enough, I so fix the hell out of your computer, trusty. <laughs> Game of Tron says hi, everybody. What's going on, Game of Tron? I trust doing? for Fundy. I'm doing well, man. I <laughs> trust for Fundy. You hear you heard it here first. Yeah. We have to start a trust for Fundy. Watch uh fun for trusty. So we can get him. We can get him some proper, some proper vittles. What's going on, Mr. Uh, DickBlake.com, aka, <laughs> aka uh, the Copic Kid, aka Josh Chris Art, aka I ran out of AKAs. <laughs> Nothing's going if on. If you can't say it all, just say meth. You know. Oh, kind of local in the house, man. What's going on? Jumped in to give a thumbs up. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. And uh, okay, got Trump's everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, no. yeah. Trust me. That's why I don't. I used to, but that's why I don't really do much on Wednesdays. And right. you know, Fridays is date night, so you know y'all are not gonna see me. So if any of those shows are on Friday or on Wednesday. It ain't getting seen. And of course, if you're doing the fan edition on a Thursday, I'm streaming on a Thursday. So, yep. so that no. ain't happening. That ain't going to be seen. Understand. What's up, Ragged Man? How you doing, brother? Thanks for joining us. He's over on the D Live side. Cute. 
you know. Hopefully, the 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 two the two people on Twitch will join up and see us that we're, see that we're streaming and come on over. We need for support. Nah, <laughs> I'm just trying to get everything going little by little. I yeah. know, I know. You're building an audience just like the rest of us. It's got to it's got to happen somehow. Yes. And not do it like the other edge lords do. Yeah, I don't worry about them. I don't either. I only worry about what I can control. Just my little domain. Just my little domain. And eventually, you know, we'll get trusty back in. Yes. I'm keeping an eye on out and everything. My brother's in the house. I know he's uh, working, so. No, I didn't watch the one with Manny either. The only time, the one and only time I ever watched it. Oh, you are looking at the page. Cool. Is when uh, Gary Shipman was invited. And that's because we were on Gary Shipman's stream already. And they invited him, and then he said, well, I'm going to jump over. And he came in late, and he drew a Captain America, and that was it. And that was it. Captain America must have been the theme for that night. I think, yeah, it was 9-11, actually. And uh, he drew the he drew a Captain America with, a nine, with the Twin Towers behind it. Behind him in the backgrounds, I almost wrote copycat on yellow flash page, but I stopped myself. <laughs> Trusty says rebooting beat boop. I don't know. I think I think the beat boop is copyrighted by uh, Nasser. Might want to make sure that y'all can't copyright, but I can. <laughs> I might want to check with that. I might want to check on that oh, one. Damn, what the hell did that happen? Nah, the contract of life is not easy, my brother. Who are you telling? Who are you telling? You're preaching to the choir, man. Been contracting for so long, I forgot what it is like to hold a real job. Uh, contracting is a job. You're bringing, yeah. You're bringing in money. Yeah, yeah, definitely bringing in money. The thing with contracting is you were one company one year, next year you were another company. Yeah. Might be doing the same job, might be in the same place. But you're working but for someone else. But you're working for somebody else. Which is good for stability. You always have that job, but it's bad for benefits because your benefits get changed out. <laughs> right. You know. Yeah, that's gotta be a pain to call up your doctor saying, uh, my insurance changed again. Yeah, I, my 401k changed again. Yeah, well, it, that you just have to roll over and hope for the best, right? Yeah, that, yeah, the rolling over process can be a pain. Yeah, if you don't do it right, you get taxed on all your money. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> You gotta be good. You gotta be careful when you're doing it. That is very true. You know, they will tax the heck out of you. You got to be smooth about it. Smooth, Uh, Trusty says, "Okay, well, I copyright at Nasser Peace Theater." <laughs> That's not the way. I have full benefits at the VA. Says my brother. Yeah. I hear you on that one. Yeah. Working through a temp is worse because you don't really get no benefits. Say again now? Working through a temp agency is even worse because you don't get no benefits. Oh, yeah. Temp agencies are the worst. If you got to get your foot in the door, they're good yeah, for that. A, well, yeah. Getting your foot in the door is half the battle. You know, but continuously just doing temp jobs that leads to no that that doesn't something that doesn't lead to anything as I mean you'll get continue to get paid but benefit wise you don't get no benefits you don't get anything not even not even uh, days off nope 
when I was when I was with a temp, like I had to work for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Fuck even though nobody, man. even though nobody else was working, but either I could work or not get paid. Yeah, uh, one time I had to uh, go into another section to work uh, Black Friday because the section I was in, um, those guys had off on Black Friday. Dude, I couldn't, I couldn't see people working on that day. And it's got to be the worst day to work on. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is yeah. Well, unfortunately, most companies will give you off Thanksgiving, but they but. Black Friday, forget it. Yeah, I'm talking about like if you work retail. Oh, that's kind. Of, oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mariana says rain and thunder here. Perfect, spooky weather. Yeah, it's the same thing out in my area, Mariana. Only it's calmed down a little bit. See what happens if we do that. Trying to play around. Get Josh Chris a little bit of love on his coloring. Yeah. So play arc with me again. I don't know, brother. I was I was hoping sometime in the weekend. The wife done planned the whole weekend out. Okay. <laughs> well, we've been back at it, man. We've been there almost every night. Oh, you guys have been over there every night. You know, yeah. I've been playing, I've been playing um, Outer Worlds. Yeah. And we um, I got Jeremy more involved, and now we've moved on to another map, and uh, we're trying to catch dragons. Oh. Nice. Hey, Gary, how you doing? You're not late, brother. You're always on time. You're on time. You get here when you get here, brother. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't. Um, Aragalanians in the house. I haven't. I was playing Outer Worlds. Um, then I haven't played anything in like a couple of days. Right. A wizard is neither late nor early. Here I go. Photo back. Yeah. Yeah, Outer Worlds is pretty fun, but it's it's one player. Right. right, but I've been having a blast with it. I'm like, oh, just what because player, you know. Go ahead. What player games can be good when you don't feel like uh, hearing some adolescent edge lord uh, yelling in your your drums? Well, the way we the way we play, we we just have a select group that we play with. Oh, and Ooh, that's it. Multiplayer games where you're versing people. Yeah, we just we just kind of have a select group that we play with, and and they're all adults. Good. And we've been in that community for a while. Ragged Man says, "Out of Worlds, it's a fun game. It is though, right, man? You know, I'm over here. Uh, let's see. I try to draw some Jim Lee panels from scratch, so I feel like Painty going through with that splash page. Yeah, it's just I'm just wanted to do something different, but this is a this is a Pretty complicated Jim Lee piece. This is not, um, you know, it's it's got Green Lantern, Batman, Superman in the background somewhere. I was wanted. I, of course, they wouldn't show Wonder Woman because no violence towards women. But but the men, you know, they can all be dead. It's all good. <laughs> Kill all right. the men. Kill them all, Riddick. <laughs> yeah, the women. What was the women in fridge type thing? Yeah, I've tried. Uh, let's see, doing good, making myself an intro while enjoying the stream. All right, that's Marcus. He's talking to Ara. And uh, did we get Trusty back? I'm back. Yay! Uh. We got Trusty back after uh, his malfunctioning. No, PC. Not so trusty after all. Uh, well, that's that's not you. That's your PC. So we're gonna give you. We're gonna give you a breather on that one. We're gonna give you a break. Will it slide? Didn't even give me any warning. You know, sometimes it'll say your PC it will shut down in you know two minutes. But no, not tonight. Why, 
Why right. would it do that? What's the fun in that? Where's the yeah. surprise factor? Yeah, where's the Halloween surprise in that? Hey. Yeah, Moran, yeah, yeah. Jim Lee's amazing. You're right. He uh um, yes. he he is his own person. Pretty doggone rich too. Yeah. If I can catch his streams, I'll catch him. But I haven't really been catching a lot of people's streams lately. So me neither. You know, I finished uh, putting the last pieces of the nursery together. So I'm almost done with that. Very nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's really pink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. Wonder why. Yeah, it's really pink. It was, <laughs> she, but the wife did good, man. She picked out some beautiful furniture and stuff. So, right. Uh, I'm not mad. I don't care. I think I made that area black too. Real. Despite what everybody, uh, all, all, all things said, the baby was spending more time in my office room than anywhere else. <laughs> I'll wrap this up later. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my little bot. To a con called AWA Anime Week Atlanta. Ooh. That's what Marcus says. That's nice, Marcus. Shoot, I think you're going to enjoy it. I think you're going to enjoy it. I wish I was still on that side of the world because I probably would have went too. Because uh, I don't mind driving to Atlanta. Well, I, I didn't used to mind driving to Atlanta. I can't do that no more. No, no more driving to Atlanta. Hmm. Let's see. Been going for three years now. I love it, says Marcus. And Lady Celtic Moon is asking Gary what he's up to. Is he still here? I don't know. I saw him over in uh, the D and Q uh, fan edition chat. Maybe, uh, maybe he's just doing his rounds. Could be. Oh, I right, say so he's going to the Rhode Island Comic Con. Nice. You guys seem to have a lot of cons up there in the Northeast, Ara. Sure. I just got um, just got an email from the Raleigh SuperCon, which is now GalaxyCon, but I, the email still says SuperCon. That's con. a cool Gogeta there. Thanks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Ara says we do. And Marcus says nice, and it's probably because it's it's big city life. Big cities do well. I th well, I think they do well with cons. I know Raleigh had had the super con twice a year, but I would only go during the summertime. Don't function in the cold. Don't function in the cold. I got you. Which means I've been having a horrible time here lately because it's been. 24, 27, 28 it, degrees. It hit 34 tonight. Shoot. We've, yeah. been, we've been doing that every day for the last week. Well, it, like, it just came out of nowhere. And uh, a, whole bunch of play, a whole bunch of counties started canceling uh, Halloween. Oh, Free, wow. uh, freeze warning? Uh, possible frost this weekend. Nice. Not really. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> My life savings go to cons now. I hear you. I don't don't put all your life savings in the cons, man. You gotta retire sometime, right? I'm gonna be at Galaxy Con come next uh, next month. The one hit. The one at um. Kentucky. Yeah, I think I think you're gonna like it. I think you're gonna do well. I've been once already. All right. All right. I'm giving it another shot. If this you didn't do good last away, time. I won't go again. I, I don't blame you on that one. 
Micah says uh, Rick Piper's good. stream earlier. I think John Dillard was saying, you know, because of the fires in California, they were canceling Halloween in places and, and of course having to evacuate people. I think John said he evacuated. Wow, that's uh, crazy. Uh, yeah. Some you of know. that video footage they've been showing has been pretty intense. Yeah, I haven't watched you it. Know, my cousin was telling me he doesn't live in that area. Where the fires were happening. But that's every year in California, though. I know, right? Yeah, I know. That's every year. That's like hurricanes in Puerto Rico, California got wildfires. Yeah. And earthquakes. And gang violence, depending on where you live. Mm hmm. A big bro, time for me to go babysit, catch up with you later. Later, brother. I hope you have a great, great evening, man. You know, thanks for dropping by. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy though, right? It's like every year, somehow, some way, they have an ap apocalyptic fire. And, you know, it, it, it's hard to comprehend. You know, you hear about how many, you know, hundreds of thousands or, or more, you know, acres, acres, you know, that have burned, like, Golly, you know, they have anything left? Yeah, it's funny because when I, I went to Cali a few months ago and I was driving, all their land was dry. Like the, the cows were eating dried up brown grass. Poor cows. <laughs> I was like, that's crazy. Pablo says, California sounds like a terrible place. It is, man. It's the heart of liberal city. No, I don't know. I'm not going to say that. But... Uh, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Really people really people. yeah. Let's see. Then they get too much rain, must lights. Yeah. It's, it's funny you say that because uh, February they had a big must light last year in California. Hmm. They They just can't win. No, they can't. They just can't win. But I give them this. They got nice weather year round, though. Yeah. For the most part, except for San Francisco, San Jose area, it gets pretty cold there. Hang on. Dang it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Necker says, yep, I remember. I remember. Yeah. It's something else, but it is what it is, man. You know, every place got a good, a good, uh, it's good aspect bad. and a bad, bad aspect. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. And then of course, but I still, like I said, I tell people I still miss the East Coast. Hey, and it misses you. I tell you, man. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Venom says, just wanted to drop in and wish y'all a happy Halloween. I sadly can't stay and watch. I'm over on Angleton's Drunk Stream. All right, brother, enjoy. Thanks for dropping by. Yep. Punch yep. that like button, you know? like. Let's see, Trusty's electric eraser, if painted right, could be a cool prop science fiction weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Baranya says, oh, no, it's Venkman here, too. Winky face. Yeah, Venkman. Uh, Eglin T must be done with his show. No, he said he's still doing it. Oh. He said he's still doing the drunk stream. At least that's what I read. I don't know. I could be mistaken. No, right. that's what he said. That's yeah, what he said, right? Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought he said. Let's see. Okay, everything's cool. So quiet. Everything's so chill.
If only YouTube wasn't so anal about playing music. <laughs> I guess we could play uh, royalty free. Right. I haven't set it up yet. Curse those musicians and wanting to be paid for their work. <laughs> so unreasonable. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? Like, so what if, if you, CDs aren't really a thing anymore? <laughs> but if you uh, if you run it off of the YouTube channel, they still get view. There's, that still counts as a hit for them and a view for them. So they still get paid. Technically right. speaking, it shouldn't yeah. be such a butthole about it because that's still that's still getting them. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. I digress. Yeah. I'm wondering how many of those channels that make uh, anime music videos get it. I don't know. Probably a lot. Uh, Game of Tron, I'm creeping up on 3 a.m. here. I have to be up at 7. It was lovely to catch a stream even for a minute. All right, Game of Tron, man. You have a wonderful evening, man. God bless and good night. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll try to. I'll try to. I'm over here focusing on all these little lines. That's why I'm like, ah. Yeah. I'm focusing on these little tiny lines. It's supposed to be fish scales, I guess. Simulation of oh, Aquaman's armor. Mm-hmm. This has got a million little lines in it. It's part of why I don't like drawing Spider-Man so much. I don't think Spider-Man's got that many lines on it. Not compared to this. Maybe not compared to Aquaman or Captain America, but it's, it's the placement of the lines that gets me. Yeah. It'll just be like Todd McFarlane. Just don't give a crap and just put lines wherever you want. <laughs> and, he did, and he did draw Spider-Man for a while. Yep. Yeah. His Spider-Man lines were never consistent. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything bad. Uh, nope. No. Todd's artwork on Spider-Man is one of the most... Uh, memorable for me, but you know, it's it's still the fact that you look at Spider-Man and look from a different angle. The webs are totally nowhere close to the same spot. It's like, geez, give him the black costume already. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I, I didn't mind it. You know, it's, it, it, it was it was it was neat. You know, but you, you you do catch that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that he didn't draw a nose, he liked to he liked to have the flat face. Yeah, his faces were very flat. Yeah, but whenever he did like the side view, I really think Todd's like nose placement was a little weird in a few uh, few panels uh, whenever I was growing up. But I always thought it, it it irked me. Yeah, and the way he drew Mary Jane, that was so yeah odd. compared to how other people have drawn her. Well, you know those things happen, man. But like I said, I, out, of, out of most of the Spider-Man stories and hard work that stands out, yeah, a lot of the Todd issues uh, were, were some of my favorites. I'll take him over uh, Romita Jr. But then again, I'll probably take just about any artist over Romita Jr. Yeah, it's not a name I recognize. John Romita Jr.? Nope. What about John Romita Sr.? <laughs> Thank you. Man, John know. Romita Sr. was an iconic Spider-Man artist. I know John Cena. Da, 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 da. <laughs> John <laughs> stepped into that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm real bad about um, artist names, especially when I was growing up. You know, I just, I, that, that just, I don't know, it just never stuck. So. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just now that I'm getting the appreciation. Going, oh yeah, he drew this one. Duh, I used to love that one growing up. Mm -hmm. you know, that series, uh, but growing up, comics were were not a thing that was really allowed in my house. So I got gotcha. you. You know, so I, I got lucky with a few things here and there. You know, well, I'll fix that. That the comic book store that wasn't even heard of around me for a long time. Oh yeah. You know, you might see a comic like a an old Sam's or you know something like that. You know, I'd end up with like a Ninja Turtle comic from you know, the '90s or something, and that was pretty much yeah. it. The only Ninja Turtles comics I saw for a while were the ones that came from the Archie comics. 
Yeah, same thing. Same thing, man. And back then, those were the only comics that existed to me. No, I, didn't I didn't even know one. about Mirage. I did have one of the Eastman's um, uh, like second or third prints growing up, and I, I was always careful not to let my mother ever see it because the turtles cussed in that one, and I didn't want her to take the comic away from me. Yeah. Well, that would explain a couple of scenes in the movie. <laughs> Ninja kick the damn rabbit. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> Marcus says, I finally sat down and watched Aquaman recently. The dynamics and simulation for the hair made me sick. I think made me cry. I don't know what that emoji is. Is that a crying emoji or was that a sick emoji? I don't know. I didn't see it. No, I need to watch that. I've heard nothing but good things about it. That looks yeah, like man. crying. Looks like crying. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I started watching one of those movies on YouTube that they have free with ads. Yeah. And this one was called Dudes and Dragons. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I, I only watched like the first 45 minutes, but I can't wait to go watch the rest. It is so great. <laughs> it is so campy. They all know they're making a terrible movie, and they just play it up big time. It's got James Marsters from Buffy in it. Luke Perry's in it for just a few minutes at the beginning so far, but the... The rest of the cast is just funny, and uh, oh. the CGI is terrible. <laughs> man, look, it, it, got, it's so we, bad it's good. <laughs> look who popped up, man! We we got we got a Wapple showing the Wapple face. <laughs> I've got a fresh haircut. Hello, I see, man. I was Holy watching. Cow, he's, he's clean shaven, and I'm just oh. growing mine. Whoa. <laughs> I know he, I he know. looks about twenty years <laughs> younger now. You, what brought this on? What <laughs> happened, man? His tears like no beard or nothing. Trying to be young. Oh, I see. He must. Be, that must be a con. He at least he didn't do it just for Manny. Oh, uh, if I can get my camera to work. <laughs> I haven't shaved this goatee in a while. Uh, y'all have to see. Y'all have to bear with my face for a little bit. Okay, it's, awesome. all, it's all good, brother. So I was watching your video the other day or last night about the uh, pop culture and not being yeah. able to find stuff to watch and all that. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, just kind of briefly mentioning that again is it just it's just this devolution. You know what I'm saying? I think I, I see it even more and in a certain sense, it's got me thinking of, a little bit about how com Comics Gate is turning out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like it, this was inevitable. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always happens when you get a group of eclectic people together. It's going to be splintering. There's going to be people going one way or another. It happens in every organization. Yeah. This is true. It's not. There's nothing that you can get away from or away. Yeah. It's just the way right. it is, you know. Yeah. You just gotta find good people that you can gravitate towards, you know, and oh and uh, and do what you do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how co how goes along El Chango? Oh, it's it's going. I'm trying to. I don't know if you can. Where am I here? I'm trying to show you the number. Uh, move yes, it yeah. to your left. Okay, I see it now. What a minute, kind of, sort of. Let me, let me. Uh, let me get closer. Let me. Let me okay, yes, yes. that's fifty-four. Oh, it's fifty-four. Nice. That's what I said. Uh, yeah, it's a fifty-six <laughs> page graphic novel, right? <laughs> Woo! Awesome. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Marania says, "Guapo, that Green Lantern sketch you did was righteous." Thanks, Maranya. It wasn't the winner, though, but it's all good. It's, a, it's good enough for government work. Nah, I, <laughs> I, you I should know. know. Yeah, well, at least know. Manny, Manny should know. There is, yeah, Manny should know for sure. For <laughs> sure, for sure. <laughs> Let's see. Saving my work again. 
And uh, Marcus says, nice, you're almost there. Yeah, he's almost there, man. Shoot, uh, I mean, it's, we're happy, man. We're happy that he's almost there. Speaking of almost there, Manny, uh, Manny's almost almost at the finish line, too, yeah. as far as uh, – well, not as far as doing work, but as far as getting it back from printers and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, you know, when you get towards the end of the, of the, the project, uh -huh. You almost want to hurry up, and the tendency is to you have to almost watch yourself because uh, you could almost rush those last few pages, and they don't look quite as good, you know. So yeah, right. that's that's a danger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can I can see where that can come in where people are like I'm all, I'm done, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to try to be every page better than the last. Yeah. I feel like a couple of times. That takes discipline for sure. Oh, the military <laughs> helps with that, right? Yeah, because if you're like a lot of people, like they're almost done, they're like, okay, I'm phoning in. I'm going to phone it in from here on out. It's phoned in, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I have personally I have not done a, a full project myself. You know, that's all right. I'm on the verge. But, uh, yeah. but um, as y'all saw, I was talking to a writer, and um, yeah, and I posted what what her interpretation was of what I was talking about. So yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get something going with that story soon. Yeah, get that on the going. I don't know if I'm gonna do any gogo though. Or Kickstarter? Nah, I think I'm gonna self. Or you can do that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna self. I don't want to put everybody through. It. I, I think people. Um, I think people are tired of. Uh, yeah, some down. some people are kind of tired of it, you know. And and um, I, I'm not a full time we've artist, so we've you been know, for me, too many times. yeah, I'm not a full time artist like some people. So for me, you know, I don't. I don't want to be put under the constraints of a deadline because I did a campaign. Think, uh, you know, put some money to the side, maybe uh, get the young lady that I was talking to. She seems to have a good grasp of writing. Maybe, you know, pay her some money and um, bounce ideas off and have her write pretty much the whole script. Yeah. And of course, you know, get some people from the bullpen and work out some some pricing and stuff like that. And then when I finally get around to everything, just publish it on my own. Right. That's what I'm doing with a friend currently. You know, um, it's not as glory. It's not as glorious as you know, doing a whole campaign and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But you know, we stream regularly enough where I could talk about it whenever I decide to get ready to do it and stuff like that, you know, and everybody wants to pitch in, which is great. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. I just want to get say that no, story though. right. But don't, don't say no. Don't say no. You know to... say? <laughs> just don't, don't, don't just say no. Like, oh, I'm not doing it that way. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Don't close any doors yet. Yeah. yeah I, I, I would, yeah, for, for Kickstarter, Indiegogo. Yeah. Maybe well, get the thing know. done first. You know. Yeah. We'll see. Like I said, um, my whole thing is, and my whole theory has always been that if I ever did it, you know, it, it would be self-funded. That's right. always been my idea from the start. I've never really, uh, really thought about doing it. I did get drawn into this community, though, because of that, because of a lot of people doing it. And I wanted to learn how people were doing it. And, uh, you know, and I got people with experience like El Guapo and Manny, you know. Yeah. Tyler from Drawn Talks a good guy to talk to about that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Marcus says he's doing nah, Marcus, I only got like, I don't even got like a quarter of the story done in my mind yet. Uh, I just got bits and pieces that I've been working on and trying to trying to piece together. But the lady, the the young lady, she is really good. I like the way she writes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know if you've subscribed to this channel, but uh, Jay Shiro and uh, Kate Rocha have a. Uh, if you can tune into their uh, night editor segments. Mm-hmm. 
She gets probably it. not. If it's night, nope. The only thing I do at night besides uh spend time with the wife is it's this show with a K. I check them out. Yeah, Marcus, you're gonna do the video for it. And it's not a stream. <laughs> and it's not a stream. It's just something she gets questions from people and she uh puts out videos and answers those questions. Okay. I check them out. We also still you're moving in the right direction. Yeah, it's it's a slow progress for me, man. I'm not as creative or uh, as talented as some of these people that that I hang around with. I'm just faking the funk, you know, hanging out with them, trying to learn. Stuff like that. Don't fake the funk or your nose will grow. Yeah. Just faking the funk a little bit, you know. But I don't know if uh, Trusty read uh, what she wrote about his pencils. I did. I, I didn't see it until later in the day after everybody else, but I did. Wow. I mean, it, I was I was blown away by everything that she, you know, interpreted from that. Yes. She, uh, she's pretty, she's pretty good, man. She's doing home. She's doing a Viking story right now, and that's oh, how I ran into her. She was posting it on a on a Discord server for people to look at and whatnot. And it just so happens that she's pretty cool peoples, and we started chatting. And I was, you know, asking her about advice on on my story, and so okay. that's how we got into that. A Viking right. story. Mm -hmm. Is it who I think it is? Uh, Writers of the universe. No, that's not who I thought it was. Yeah. It's on her tapas, 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 whatever that is, T-A-P-A-S. I've, I've heard um, Juju refer to Vikings in her stream before, so I thought maybe. Yeah, that's what she's talking about. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have not been able to tune into Juju's streams all week. She's streaming in the morning. I think that's the problem. <laughs> Streaming early in the morning. Yeah, I have a really rough time getting up early that early. Well, it's not that early for you. Early for me, it's like nine o'clock your time. Oh, no, I'm not up by then. <laughs> like I'm getting up around six. It's already nine on the East Coast, and by then she's already streaming. Yeah, I think she's going to do mornings now, which is cool, man. She's good peeps, man. Her artwork is amazing. Yes, it is. And and in case I wop a wonder who I'm talking about, that's the young lady that I sent your email to. She was, that wants to talk to you about publishing and stuff like that. You yeah, know, yeah. Take, yeah. I don't know if she ever got a hold of you. She's so freaking uh, humble and, <laughs> and uh, she's just really hard to her for her to reach out to people. Yeah. <laughs> I get it's that. All, no, no, nothing yet, but, you know, it's always tough, you know, to break the ice with someone like that, you know. Yes. Yeah, but she's good people. So her art is amazing. And if uh, if anybody gets a chance to check her out, she's she's on D Live. Yep. She's really good. She is really, really good, man. She does I have to like check manga. out. Yeah, she does check manga out style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she does manga style drawings, man. And uh, her, she has her own little... Um, I guess web comic. Yeah, she's working on. that's what she's that's what she's drawing. Every sometimes she streams, she's drawing her little web comic. That's that? I think she's got enough art to actually make a book if she wanted to, but I, and that's what brought the whole conversation about talking to you, Cesar, because I was like, yeah. hey, you know, you have enough art to maybe do like a trade paperback or a book. She's like, I don't know anything about that. I was like, well, I know some people. <laughs> I know some people. I know some good people. I'm not going to introduce you. I know you. a guy. Yeah, no, but I'm not going to I know a guy who knows a guy. Yeah, I'm not going to introduce you to nobody that I don't think is it's an honest, reputable person, though. Right, I wouldn't do that. Either. Just because of her demeanor and the very that she is. Yes. You know, I, I don't think... Uh, Introducing her to people who don't have a good heart would be good for her. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Because uh, you can tell she's she's really really shy. You know, I don't want her, you know, being exposed to someone that, that that's not a good quality person. 
You know? Oh man, you're making me blush. Well, you know, I, I can see that a lot. Of, I can see that most of the people in the digital bullpen circle really good people. You know, so it is what it is on that count. I might be a little biased. <laughs> yeah, a but, I've been, but I've been streaming like with people like Manny and Trusty and and Josh Chris Hart for man way over a year now. Right. So. I'm just a rookie. I've, <laughs> I've known Josh for way more than that. You know. Yeah. But you know, like I said, I'm just trying to make it so so good people, you know. I wanna put out positive positive vibes. You know, anyone she ever she's ready. She'll yep. reach out. But her, artwork, but her artwork is pretty freaking amazing. I'll be right back. Take your time, trust me. Right. <laughs> Marcus says, "Right, that's right, Marcus. I don't, I don't want to introduce people to bad people. You know, I want everything to stay positive, and um, people, people that are actually good people that want to help people out. That's 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 my goal." Put good people together. If I could do it, you know, I mean, they, you want to say the path to God, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, when, when you try to when you try to do good things, sometimes they don't work out like that. But mm -mm. Hopefully, hopefully they will. You know, hopefully they will. Hopefully they will. Uh, that's why I'm here. The digital open positive vibes. <laughs> Thanks, Marania. <laughs> we try, man. I really, I really do try to keep this as positive as possible. That's always a good thing. I really do, man. Cause it's like uh, it's the whole idea behind it, you know. It was, it's sad because if not, Chewbacca's coming out, says Marcus. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Marcus. Marcus's alt account, Chewbacca. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Marcus is good people too, man. Best mod in the business. Between him and KG. Good peoples, man. Good peoples. And that's that's what we try to do, brother, man. What you doing up so late? Oh well, obviously you're working on Django. <laughs> it's like Yeah. It's like never mind. So, I just, I just I told you, man. Question. It's gotta be done by next week, man. Silly you yeah, silly we, rabbit. Yeah, we gotta we gotta have our uh campaigns launch on I mean, get out there on time. We can't be like uh we don't have the same cloud as other uh Campaigners and can be a year late, and you know what? Though I do, I, I do one thing I do like about you know, like the small, small guys, man. Like, like uh, Cesar just barely made enough to get the campaign funded, but he's still working on it. Like a million people are waiting on the book, man. Like he's making everybody that backed the book feel like, like it was worth it for them. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, that's uh, Let's see. that's exact. Oh, bugs. Um, yeah, you know, so just uh, it's just a mentality that I've had for you know a long time. I've had books published by publishers, and you know, and meeting those deadlines and stuff. And you know, the funny thing is, if you can keep a deadline for a publisher, but you can't keep a deadline for yourself, that's, that's kind of a sh that's bad. <laughs> You know, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely not not good. So, yeah. hmm, I see. Yeah, you know, that's how that's those little things I notice. You know, but yeah. just can I, can I just want to 
Um, so I'll, I have had a lot of people asking me about, oh, is a campaign over, you know, because I posted some colored pages and stuff like that. And, you know, the thought crossed my mind about maybe when I get closer to, to like the coloring and lettering being done and it's getting close to going to print of doing like a short one week campaign to see if anyone that missed their chance to get it on it the first time, you know, um, may just figure something, something like around $500 right. uh, and just, you know, get in on it and raise some extra money. Cause when you're printing X amount of books, Five hundred do- extra dollars can actually give you, you know, uh, about another sixty to eighty extra books. So, just something I was thinking about. Any thoughts on that? Who you got me on that one, man? I got the frog book, but never opened it. Says Lady Celtic Moon. I still haven't got the frog book. So- I- I mean, I don't see I don't see that as a bad idea. I mean, as I've seen people who uh, who didn't get funded, you know, take some time off and then uh, relaunch and then have success, better success on the second time around. But like you're already funded, so you're just trying to, you know, you're just trying to give people an opportunity to catch. I yeah. say put the feelers out there and see how many people. Yeah, Chuck actually want to want to want to do it, and then see if it's really worth your time to put that that kind of effort into it. Even though yeah. all the work is already done, technically, but yeah, Chuck from Sportman seems to be doing better the second time around. So I don't know, you know. See if we can get a a, a census of some sort to to gauge the the temperature. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, maybe when I'm when I'm done with everything. And, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll have to mull it over. I'll pray on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think it'll hurt. You know, if it if nobody bites, then you still have the people that you know that you're printing for. You know, right? I don't know, man. I honestly, don't know. Those, those are questions that are above my pay grade at this time. Word. Let's see. Everybody's pretty quiet in the chat. Everything's awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, man, but, you know, I don't know. That's that's interesting. That's interesting. Mm. Oh, trusty sidekick is. Oh, he's there. He's just spinning wheels. Getting in out of there. There we go. All right. Let's see. All right. Everybody's back. Yay! <laughs> Everybody's doing good. I think uh, Shinobi's drawing some witch. Yeah. Cherry blossom on a broom. It's Halloween. She likes costumes. Why not? I am mad at it. <laughs> but then again, I never am. You know? Right. And Manny says, Aloha to Josh Chris Art. <laughs> I'll say, what? <laughs> yeah. He, he went by your name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was one of those Kickstarter books that never got to. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> it might be. It might be. You never know. You never know with these people. I know, right? Well, 
what's gonna say it? Manny says, say it, say it. All right. Hello, Richard. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Richard. Is Richard. he here? Manny, he's in the chat. You know, yeah. Manny, Manny supports us. I don't see him in the uh, in the green room, but he's in the chat. Yeah. If he's not in the green room, he's in the chat, so he's somewhere. Yeah. Manuel Correa. Is he here? Yeah, well, he's not in the green room, but he's in the chat. He is definitely uh, in the chat. Yeah. I think... Uh Man, he's he's pretty hairy, isn't he? The uh, um, Pablo. <laughs> he's like a bear. <laughs> yeah, if it's right. the, if the picture that I saw of him is the right one. Yeah, Manny. Manny is like a uh, Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, yeah, Manny's like Santa Claus, but Pablo, I think, looks like a bear. Oh wow. I never seen uh, Pablo. Yeah, I thought I saw. I thought he was on some uh, crowdfunding comics thing with uh, Billy Tucci. Yeah, man. Was he on here? Was he on that? Because uh, he was. Now. What was the name yeah. of the book? Uh, I don't know. It's like some science fiction. Book. Was it Cyborg USA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was Pablo. Pablo. Yeah. yeah. How'd you like that Rose Tico that Pablo drew? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was pretty awesome, man. That was. Did anybody blow a gasket on that one? You know, Paolo does that to, so people can blow gaskets. Yeah. I think you're too busy getting triggered over actual anime. Yeah, like the one they were <laughs> going off on yours, man. Uh, Paolo says it was for Cyborg USA. Paolo oh, okay. proud of that. <laughs> don't, don't, don't mess with Paolo's pride. It was for Cyborg USA. He said he looked like a bear. Let's see anybody else? Yeah, Pablo says it was for Cyborg USA. <sighs> and you can find that on the Indiegogo. Uh, Pablo Romero on Indiegogo, uh, Cyborg USA. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please back the book so I can be on Twitter as well. I know Twitter does not charge. Very, very good to me. I know Twitter doesn't charge, but, you know, internet costs money. Book sell, I get money. That picture was kind of old. I have longer hair now. <laughs> <laughs> says that picture was old. I see. Gotta so instead it. of looking like a bear, he looks like Chewbacca. Is that what? I, I think that's what he's saying. <laughs> I think that's what he's saying. I was like, Pablo is straight up Hispanic, all hairy and stuff like El Guapo. Oh yeah. We can't have all baby faces like you, E. Who, man, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> <laughs> I see that Facebook picture looking all young like a, some kid. <laughs> well, that, you know, that, that might be an old picture, too. <laughs> uh, how old is that picture? It's about two years old, three years old. That's not that long. It's old, man. A lot, a lot has changed since then. I have sneakers older than that. I know. Me too. I still wear them. And my wife gives me the look of disapproval. <laughs> <laughs> Throw those sneakers out. Just don't wear them out with me. Uh, exactly. Like, uh, no, man. I had some old, uh, when Adidas, we did the old school Run DMC Adidas. I mm -hmm. bought a pair, and I, I really love those shoes. And uh, they got thrown away. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sick and tired of you wearing these 
old dinky sneakers. Mm. Yeah, she's like, I don't like those Adidas. I said, baby, those were retro. Those were retro Adidas. What are you doing? You're all ruining my retro classics. I was like, why did you get rid of my retros? No mercy, man. You ruined oh, no. my retro. No mercy. Now I only have a baby face if if I shave like a wobble, you know. A wobble got the baby face now with no hair, uh, looking all young, dapper and debonair. I know. With my with my fresh haircut, like with a young fresh private, cut, like a young private uh, getting enlisting in the army for the first. He's a marine, man. Don't don't. It's a marine, bro. Don't, don't do that to him. Don't do that to him, man. Marine, brah. Okay, like a okay, like a young private on his first day at Paris Island. How's that? Yeah, now now he's happy. Don't get don't get that yeah. don't get that old marine. Don't get that, tw don't get that twisted. <laughs> don't get that old marine angry, man. Right, man. You know, I always say he was a marine because his ASVAB score was too low to join the army, but. Nobody, nobody mentions that. Nobody, nobody. Dude, it's hilarious <laughs> though because, like, I'm a fairly smart guy, and I know, I'm my and my and my freaking my di, not my di, my recruiter, convinced me. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. You know, don't worry about your school. We'll get you and we'll put you in in the best place that's gonna fit you. <laughs> what a load of horse manure that was. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey, look, they, don't, they put you what's their best need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. Like, um, I was, uh, I wanted to be in, uh, in the radio, like radio, radio, like, uh, yeah. not a radio operator, but like a radio broadcaster guy, right? Like, like Adrian from now. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like, like, you know, like, one of those. Good morning, airports, Vietnam. You know? Yeah, yeah like that, right? So, so they were like, oh, yeah, we got the perfect radio job for you, blah, see, blah, see, blah, you're going to love it, blah, 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 blah. Man, I was, I was a, uh, they put me at AM radio relay station up in a mountain. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, this, this is not what I had in mind. You said you wanted to be a radio operator uh, in the radio you business. Here you go. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, it's like freaking recruiters, man. I know. And now you're on YouTube doing streams. I know, right? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, this is my chance. This is my chance to be that, that broadcaster. I was never able to be what I was in. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now I can you now I can board like 10 people at a time. <laughs> you do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I hear I hear I hear an Eminem song playing in the background right now. Oh, yeah. You only get one shot. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> That's like his theme song. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. My goodness, man. Y'all got me cracking up over here. I got like a tear forming in my eye because I'm too hard. <laughs> yep. Award yourself a thousand points if, if you guess what I'm drawing. <laughs> Let me see. Mm, no say like a, like a skunk girl yeah looking yeah, like a skunk, girl. like a skunk girl a skunk girl like a you a skunk girl like a me yeah that's what it look like look like it look like a C collect says he's back Marcus Kim says he's back everybody's back look at y'all coming back y'all miss all the great stuff man we can't repeat it you have to watch the replay that's it yeah I'm just playing. I'm just playing, people. I'm just playing. We were talking about my failure as, as an entertainer. That's what we were talking about. Right. Man, this year seemed like not a lot of houses giving out candy. It was dead. Oh, man, that happens. You know. Got it. That happens. When I was growing up, uh, we lived uh, a block away from uh, a man that was known as Coca-Cola Brown. <laughs> now, I don't know, you know, exactly what his position was in the Coca-Cola company, but, you know, he was somebody um, big, big deal. And so 
he wouldn't give out candy. He would give out Coca-Cola, <laughs> but he had this uh, nice, you know, old metal, cool, yeah. metal cooler on the front porch and everybody came by, I could get one of those little, you know, glass bottles of Coke, but you had to sit there and drink it there and leave the bottle. You couldn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> now that makes sense. Cause kids with glass bottles on Halloween, mm, that spells disaster. That seems like danger written all over it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Marcus is laughing. Nobody gives candy here or goes out to get it. See, so so you're not alone. Well, you know, some, you know, it just it, those things happen, man. You know, people are, uh, um, they're I don't want to. What do you call it? Secluding themselves. They're isolating. They're isolating themselves with electronics and, yeah. uh, you know, not not. Really Gotta binge watch. This thing on Netflix that I can watch at any time. Not really socializing too much with folks, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, those things happen, you know. It is what it is. It's just a sign of the times. Nobody can talk to anybody nowadays anyway without somebody getting offended about something. So exactly. Yeah, I have to say the quality of the costumes this year was very poor. Well, that's what happens, happens when you have uh, people who think they can tell, they think, think they can dictate to others what's, what is and what isn't appropriate for a costume. Well, that and plus you can buy everything on Amazon now. Yes, that is true. You know, and that's all mass produced. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like when Trusty was young and he had to build his own custom by cutting out holes in the bed sheet. Oh man, I had the you know the ones the old Ben Cooper ones with the plastic mask with the little holes for your nose. Yeah, I remember those. You breathe. I had, I had the Batman one. <laughs> one year, man, I wore that out. costume out. Fortunately, I had parents that could actually sew. That's good. Yeah, them uh, plastic masks with two ear, uh, two nose holes, and <laughs> so that they skinny swear. little rubber band, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. barely, barely hold on to the little staple. Right, right. <laughs> what's what's uh, was it Jerry Seinfeld has a bit on that that he does is pretty hilarious. Oh my goodness, y'all remember those? Do they still make those? I haven't seen those. I don't, I don't know. They use better yeah. elastics now. I tell you what, though, I think if you if you can find those, you know, unopened boxes, those costumes, I think they they fetch a fair price. Uh, you Some, know, you know, good ones, popular ones. You might be right. It, they were so cheesy, and they get fogged up too, so it was hard to breathe in them. Yes, <laughs> they get fogged up. You have you have condensation inside your mask. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, me and the wife try to do handmade costumes a lot. One year, we made ourselves into. Nomeo and Juliet. I, I had to think about that when I was like, what in the world is he? Growing up, I always had handmade customs, says Maranya. And Marcus says, yep, that's why stores like Toys R Us are going out of business. Online shopping is more convenient. Yeah. Times. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, I, I'm guilty. You know, Christmas time, I don't want to go out and, and drive around in all the traffic and brave the crowd. I'd rather just sit there and order stuff on my computer. Yeah, I, either either I buy it months ahead of time and just stash it somewhere, <laughs> or I order it online. You know, because I just I just can't deal with it, man. Like, if if traffic is bad year round, at Christmas time it seems to intensify, and I ain't trying to be involved in that. Right. In that um. So I usually try to get it ahead of time. I, I try to get it ahead of time because, man, I just can't. I just can't deal with it. So I have what I have. It's way too thick. What I have suggested and uh, what I call that sublimely message the wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw this Invicta uh, Punisher watch that looks so dope, and um, I'm like. Baby, remember when I told you I have everything I ever wanted? Well, I kind of lied. I, lied. <laughs> I, I don't have the challenge, honey. 
that, I've that, always wanted the Punisher. <laughs> I didn't want it till I saw it, <laughs> but <laughs> but I saw it and I was awesome. like, wow. No, because I I was gonna get uh, I wanted to get um, an Iron Man. Um, what's they call them? Seiko watches, the ones that that are light. The light uh, gives them energy, and they self wind. I forgot what those are called. I think are they Seiko? I don't know. Anyway, they have a real nice Iron Man one, but they want way too much money. So then I started looking online, and I saw a Punisher one for like half the price, and I was like, "Whoa, baby, this one right here, <laughs> that's the one." And then after that, I won't want anything else ever again. I will truly have all I want. <laughs> Almost, almost. Crossing my fingers. I am. I am a blessed individual. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, man. I mean, I don't have everything in the world, but I don't really have a want for anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like when they ask me, "What do you want for Christmas?" I don't know. I got everything I really want. That's like, pretty much my position. I'm good, you know. It's hard for me to say I want this for Christmas, but but I saw that. I saw that. That uh, it's Seiko. It is Seiko. I saw that Seiko uh, Iron Man watch, and I was like, "Ooh, I want that." But then I saw the price. I nope, I am not gonna make you buy me no expensive watch. And then I saw the Punisher one, and it's black and it's dope. It's got a white skull and the watch face and everything, and it's an Invicta. And Invictus are pretty good watches. Right. So I was like, "Ooh, that's pretty nice." Let's see. Miranda says one year. Uh, I was a hobo, another Raggedy Ann, complete with red yarn wig. Oh man, now that's pretty amazing. Man, I, I was a I ninja. Heard, I haven't heard Raggedy, Raggedy Ann in a long time. There was one year I was Roger Rabbit in homemade costume. Cool. What? And that's, <laughs> uh, did you do the voice as well? Can you do the Roger Rabbit voice? Can't do it right now because the kids are asleep. But yeah, it used to be really good. <laughs> Josh Chris does voices and Trusty does voices, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's one of my favorite cartoons. Yeah, who framed Roger Rabbit? Oh yeah. yeah man. No, she's like the, the girl, she's just she's just she's just too much. She's just drawing too much. Like, yeah, but when I was growing up, I didn't really look at that. I was just intrigued by the whole idea of they, a cartoon movie. Yeah, I yeah, that's the thing. It's like yeah, I mean, it, it it is a beautiful cartoon movie. I'm not gonna. Yeah, lie. it's like nobody's really thinking about that kind of thing except for you guys. Well, you know that's what parents do, right? But now that you mention it, I like movies. <laughs> no wrong with that. It's part part of the part of the thing, man. It's part it's part for the course. Especially Boba's movies. Par for the course. Par for the course. Yeah, man, but. Yeah, man, it, it's it's crazy. I think uh, I've been a Spider Man. Uh, sweet, sweet MJ. I've been a Punisher this year. I did Tony Stark for for um for what you call it for a birthday party that was supposed to be a pre Halloween birthday party. So I did uh, I did Tony Stark, man. I thought it was I thought it came out okay. I thought it came out okay. Uh. Did your wife dress up as Pepper? No, I don't think my wife's complexion would allow for that, and, and I don't think it would pass very well. She, uh, she, she picked up my old Punisher garb, and she went as the Punisherette. <laughs> well, there was a Punisherette in the manga verse. I was gonna say that's coming out from Marvel real soon, isn't it? They, they've, they've had a female Punisher before. Yeah, not just a manga verse. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm familiar with. No, no, they had one before. Okay. As a matter of fact, she was with the Punisher. Uh, what was her name? Google time. <laughs> but but there was a tra there was a mentor trainee type relationship between the Punisher and a female Marine that was a Punisher type uh, person as well. So much for gender bending the Punisher as a joke. Let's see. Okay, Lynn Michaels, Lady Punisher. Lynn Michaels was a fictional vigilante and ally to Marvel Comics anti-hero The Punisher. Well, I guess I can't do that joke. Oh, it, it was happening. She she was in the war journal, apparently. 
Okay. Uh, she first appeared in Punisher Warzone number seven as a police officer attempting to catch a serial rapist plaguing Central Park. Frank Castle, the Punisher, is in the park as well, taking down targets of opportunity, as well as being aware of said rapist. They both confront the criminal. He escapes. Then, of course, they team up, blasi, 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 and there you go. There you go. See, it was a real thing. Okay. Gotcha. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to you about that. I know. I love the Punisher, man. Yeah, um, that was that was before they, they stopped drawing females, you know, nice and curvy. So <laughs> she was actually pretty nice looking in the comics. So, yeah, man. Yeah, they had it before. It's not the first time that she wasn't. She didn't pick up his mantle. They worked in tandem, in conjunction. You know, it wasn't like now the Punisher is female and Frank is dead. She she didn't take over and show you how well it really could be done. Right. Oh, you talk about that Batwoman. (laughs) Yeah, that's cringy, man. You know what else is cringy? The Runaways from Marvel and Hulu. That's super cringy. It It is. Guys, I gotta go. I'll have to catch you later. All right, bye, guys. Out. Thanks for coming, bro. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to. Uh oh, Josh leaves. Man, he comes. No, we've never seen him in the same street. And I'm just kidding. It's an equivalent <laughs> exchange. I, I think so. Wow, I scared off Josh Chris. You do. You do. Hey, you do people, man. I'll leave. I'll leave, Josh. No, man, just stick around. I think it's it's like uh, almost eleven. It's almost midnight over there in Kentucky. So yeah. people are dipping in and dipping out, flipping in and flipping out. You know, yeah. I, I, Manny, man, now Manny is a good historian, man. Manny could tell you more about that lady Punisher than than me. Yeah, I, uh, I was not really a big Punisher fan. I liked him as a I liked him as a secondary character when he just popped in and out once in a while in Spider Man. So yeah. it's not like when they made him into his own thing, it wasn't that great. I, I didn't like it. I I pretty much got every single Punisher, you know, mm-hmm. before he got his own I mean the, the miniseries was pretty good. But then once he went to the Punisher, then the Punisher War Journal and Punisher this and Punisher that, I was like, seriously? I even got the yeah. magazines, Punishers. You know, they were just trying to capitalize, man. They were totally trying to capitalize on you. It was like unbelievably. Yeah. Crazy. It's like because when when I start okay, so when I started to collect comics, I think Punisher was like in about five issues from the time he first appeared. So that's 1980. So whenever he first appeared, what was 70, 73, 74? He was. He was really not that, you know, was was not used very much. Mm-mm. Right. You, so you got 129, hit 130, Amazing Spider-Man, and then he appears in 201 or something like that. Yeah. That's where, that's where I was introduced to him. Because I think yeah. I got issue 199, then issue 200, then issue 201. That was, that was my introduction to Spider-Man. In right. the comic, which is pretty darn good to be yeah. during that part. And I see yeah, it, that it, cover, and the cover is in mint condition. I even have it in this room somewhere. With a, I don't know why I still have it up here. But yeah, it's, it, it was a good yeah. story. I mean, it, it I mean, right about that, a couple of months later after appearing in Spider Man, he appeared in Captain America. And that's kind of like when they started to start using him more and more and more. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because the True Believers, right? If if you go to your local comic book store, True Believers is like a buck, and they have that issue reprinted. Uh, Punisher, Spider Man. When Punisher was first introduced in Spider Man, they have it as a True Believer reprint. You can get it for one dollar. I mean, it's not it's not as cool as having the original. It didn't cost me a dollar to get the original. That's for sure. You know? Yay. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, I got my copy 25 years ago, believe it or not. Yeah, but if you're not, you know, if you're not on that level where you had it, like I said, for those of you that don't know about it, that want to know what Manny's talking about, True Believers. Uh, it's, it's like a buck on the comic book store, and they have that issue out 
As a matter of fact, I picked it up because I didn't have it anymore. So I figured, you know, why not get the reprint? Yeah, I went to San Diego Comic Con. I picked up Spider Man 129. I picked up Hulk 181. And I wanted Fantastic Four 48. I never got Fantastic Four 48. I still don't have Fantastic Four 48. 25 right. years later, I still haven't found the perfect issue for me. I mean, I find them, but I just, eh, I don't want that condition. You know, right. really on that. If I'm going to spend some money on it, I want to make sure I got something that I can pass on. Right. Not at that, man. KG's in the house. I didn't mean to ignore you, KG, but, you know, I was letting Manny talk about all. He was excited. He was talking about all those issues. I couldn't cut the man off. I so, know. So, you those, know things are not, those things are coming out really well. Yeah, I'm working on it, man. There's a lot going on here in this damn. Yeah, pit. there is. There's a lot. Jim Lee didn't play around, boy. Nope. He never yeah, does. He no, he doesn't. No. There's a lot going on here. And once again, I have picked a piece that is just way over my head, over my pay grade. I'm just going to keep working on it, though. I'll probably be working on this for a couple of days. I might tra I might transfer it over to the iPad and uh, finish it out there. Of course. You can never go a stream without hearing about this iPad. <laughs> It's magical. <laughs> it's magical, man. It's Mahia. <laughs> what is it? That and Procreate, right, Shinobi? Well, yeah. those, those are the only two programs I got on that thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, if, I, if, if freaking uh, Clip Studio wasn't trying to make yes. me pay a monthly subscription for it on the iPad, then I would use that instead because that's definitely more robust. Yes, but, perfectly. but I'm not paying for something I already own. That is a matter of principle, I think. I don't know. I even mean if I was drawing professionally or something like that, you know, maybe. Because then I could write it off in taxes as, as I, you know, expenses but i'm not drawing professionally so right yeah i got oh you. hey by the way so today i signed up for my for my free trial and then it turns into a full subscription of disney plus starting uh -oh. on november 12th i bit the dust on that one Just, uh -oh. ah, okay i'm doing it all right so what i had to do is i had to call my cable company and cancel stars because <laughs> I hear that American Gods is not going to come back for a season three. So it's the Neil Gaiman sh show on Star oh. American Gods. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was pretty good. It's a weird show, but I kind of like that stuff. So did you read so, the book? I did. Yeah. I did read the book. Yeah, me too. Yeah. The book was weird too. Yeah, it was. It was good. It so, took me a little while to get into it, but once once I was in, I was hooked. Yeah, it was pretty. What was interesting about that book is that, like, I had kind of pictured some things in my head, and on the show, a couple of things kind of matched what I saw, uh, and uh, the rest of it was like, yeah, this is nothing like the book, but they're trying. Got it. Subject to interpretation, man. That's why that's why books are so great, right? Everybody interprets and imagines them differently. Yes. That's the thing, right? Yep, that is. Yeah. But uh yeah, I don't know about that, man. Yeah, but I was saying, um if if you if you if you haven't watched Runaways or Hulu. Then you, then you have done well because that is super cringe. Yeah. It's pretty I bad. Try, I always try to give a show at least three episodes to convince me they have a shot of being somewhat decent. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do with uh, shows. If you if you don't impress me in three shows, you're done. But those, those all three episodes were bad. They were horrible. <laughs> but you know what? It's I, but see, that goes to my point of what I was talking about. You know, you, they can't just make the show be character driven. They they throw all this agenda crap into it, oh, yeah, and it, take, it takes away from the show, from the actual entertainment of the show. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you're gonna have political allegory in your show, be clever about it. No, no, no. This is straight up just propaganda. 
That show is straight up propaganda. Well, that's why I made a big rapper about it. No, no, no. no. It's, it, it was just straight out of. What is going on? Sorry, guys. The little girl won't stop crying. Don't worry about it, Josh. All good, man. All good. Marcus says 10 minutes E. Um, yeah, that show is just straight up, straight up by the numbers, man. Crazy. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's why I was telling, um, when I sent you that, that link for Pure Fix, Yeah. Yeah, because that's all, you know, those are all like, you know, Christian movies and Christian And that's shows. fine. And that, and, um, and I get it, all right? I, and I, I, there are movies like that. I've watched a lot of Christian-based movies, too. Um, but it's like a lot of times, I, I understand that it's a money thing at times, but it's like, you know, t early t TV in the, you know, back in the 70s or 80s, you know, 60s, they didn't have a lot of money either, but they were able to tell stories, you know? So it's like, um, you can, I think you can tell Christian stories or, or at least stories that are based like that and, you know, try to do something exciting, interesting yeah. with them as well. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, listen, nothing against the gospel. I love the gospel. You know, I mean, I want everybody to come to Christ and be saved and, you know, turn their, their life around. Okay. That's what I'm about. Um, but sometimes I just feel that, that, how God is a creative being, okay, and he's gifted people with, with creativity. Um, and it seems like we as Christians have relegated their creativity to just be used in the church instead of exposing it to the greater audience. So Christians have this, this, this false Im impression uh, by other people that they're not that creative, okay, when the reality – is that they're very creative. A lot of times they're just afraid to express it because they think they're going to be labeled a certain way. And so it seems like all liberals or liberal types have all been given that, that um, the, the mantle of, well, those are the creative people. Okay. In other words, you have to be a liberal. And if you're super creative, you're more than likely a liberal. Okay. Right. And, and that, Wait a minute. That's not true about you? Man, I thought you was a liberal with all your great art. <laughs> <laughs> a bleeding heart. <laughs> yeah. I'm just messing. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> so, so that that's that's so so that's one of the things that I see, you know, and and because they have allowed for that culture to kind of take over these places of creativity. When they are, when they get in there and they're trying to make some noise, they immediately get blacklisted, or they won't get put on good projects to work on where they can express themselves and that sort of thing. And and that's it hits from from film to TV to books to comics. We we've seen that. I mean, Comic Fake was basically that, okay. But then the people that came out of that in Comic Fake lost their way, uh, but. That's essentially what that movement was started as. And so, um, sadly, okay, uh, they were in a, we're kind of like in a quandary now where, where there's a lot of people that are conservative, that are, you know, Christian or people of good moral character that are creative and they're trying to wedge in and they're, 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 getting uh, people fighting against them. But the reality is that, is that they're kind of, I think that these, these entities, these liberal bastions are losing ground. And so we need to kind of keep pressing in on that, you know, which is all of this is kind of like basically what I was talking about in, in my video. Um, and so, um, you know, we need to be bold about that and just kind of not knock people in the head. It's like, but listen, dude, we're all creative. Okay, and this is what I'm representing and showing, you know. So we can't really be afraid to talk about that, especially about our faith, and be, you know, kind of open with it and say, hey, you know, some of the most beautiful things in the world were created in the name of God. Okay, 
bad things too. But I mean, look at the Sistine Chapel that was essentially painted to honor God. Okay, yeah, um, so much of the classical music that we love. Yeah. yeah, and the Sistine Chapel had new drawings in it. Yeah, but no one looked at it. no one looked at it like that. I mean, it's just a celebration of humanity. I mean. I know, but I had to bring that up because people like to complain about fan service. <laughs> it's all good, though, man. But there, there's there's some good points made, you know. How's like I said, man? We we are what we are, man. But there's always got to be an alternative way of uh, of watching TV, and I'm always a big proponent of garbage in, garbage out. Like there's some. <laughs> There's things that I just won't watch because I just don't want to waste brain capacity on it, to be honest with you. Like, I'm not going to watch that. I'm like, look, I'm not watching that. They were like, why not? I said, I'm not wasting my brain capacity on that, man. I only, hey, it's the same that computer, man. It's limited storage up there. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's limited storage up there. And uh, if you don't believe me, you know, try to remember some things that are not as important to you. You know, things that are not as important to you, they, they kind of start fading out of out of your out of your memory bank, you know. Yeah. And you always remember those traumatic events; those don't go nowhere. But yeah. you know, I, I just don't, I just don't waste. Like, I'm not wasting my mind. I'm not wasting mine on that, man. Like I, I got my little things that I wanna that I wanna indulge into my memory, and then things that I don't. Got it. Speaking of which. Zombie Land 2, I haven't watched it yet, and that is one of the things that I do want to indulge. It's a little bit of memory yeah. cells into. It looks good. Oh, yeah. Two minute warning. Oh no, two minute warning. <laughs> All right, man. We, everything we we started talking, everything started getting good. A whopper was over here philosophizing and preaching, man. And we was amening and clapping and hallelujah and behind them and everything was awesome. We're about to start <laughs> singing, but all right. Maybe next time. Many, many good people, I don't mind if I, well, we have to because I make promises and promises is promises. How do you don't you don't use the word to define the word, but promises I like I like the movie Lucky Lucky number eleven. <laughs> oh, that was a good movie. <laughs> orders is orders. Slow. You don't use the word to the to get to define the word. Orders is orders. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> never mind. Um, Shinobi Raccoon, tell the people where you can be found. Okay, you can. Okay, you can uh, look up. You can check me out on YouTube where I upload drawing videos like <laughs> like the like the one I'm about to uh, upload. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram and uh, DeviantArt. All of that under Shinobi Raccoon, and you can also check out my streams on D Live. Nice. Uh, fun the trust. <laughs> 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 oh gosh all right you can find me of course at trusty sidekick three on twitter trusty sidekick art on instagram and always with the digital bullpen thank you sir man amazing Cesar and Wapo comics all right so you can find me on twitter at uh at season feliciano on instagram at the art of season feliciano i'm also on tiktok at feliciano three uh and uh, uh, on my YouTube channel, El Guapo Comics, uh, where I do more comic stuff. But then I have my Caesar Feliciano channel where I philosophize, apparently. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, and uh, look for Chango on my page. 50, 56. 55. 50, 55. 55. Okay. <laughs> so we're working on it. We're going to get this done by next week. And uh, then I don't know. Who knows? I kind of talked about it a little bit on the episode, but you got to watch it. You got to rewatch the stream tonight to hear what I talked about. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Cesar. Hey. Manny Correa, is your microphone working? It wasn't my microphone. It was my speaker wire. I couldn't hear you guys. So I was fooling around oh. with that. And that was all that feedback. Sorry about oh. that. No worries. I see. Yeah, I got to go fix that wire. So I was trying to twist wires and I was making so much fucking feedback. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about it, bud. Anyways, happy 
Halloween, everybody. Thank you. I'm sorry I wasn't here early. I was. I went to Home Depot, picked up more stuff, and I was downstairs painting the sculptures again. Yeah, so now I'm back here. I got good news for everybody. Uh, Skunk Girl should be on the way to me. I talked nice. with Sprinters yesterday. I signed off the shipping costs because since I'm out of state, they, they charged me two times, once for the printing and once for the shipping. Because yeah. if, I, if I had done it all one time, it would have been crazy on the shipping. Oh, God. UPS to Hawaii, that much would have been crazy. So we're just on a waiting game now. So that's, that's a good part. We're just on a waiting game. So nice. I want to get it next week. And, you know, once I get that book in my hand, the very next day, I'm going to give it to KG so I can say I fulfilled in November. Which <laughs> <laughs> is a true statement. <laughs> kind of cheating there, Manny. What about us people all the way over here? That oh, I, 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 that's what I'm going to work on this weekend. I already got the, already got the Gemini's in, so I'm going to print up all the labels, pre-label everything. So once the books come in, I'm going to make sure that the people that on the, the Booster Boys, they're the easiest one to do. Just bag it, go yeah. to the post office, they get it first. Uh, the Booster, well, actually the Booster Boys and the Stink, they get it first. The other ones, I'm going to have to work a little bit at it. You know, I've got the, mm -hmm. the sketches and stuff like that. So they, they'll have to just wait a little bit longer, but not like they're going to wait two, three months. They're just going to have to wait maybe a couple weeks or so. Man, I've been waiting years for one particular book. Oh, man, Once you know what? It would be amazing if I can get my book into there. I still haven't got to that book either. I got the second book. I got the Salamandroid, but I did not get the original yet. Nobody got the original, right? Some people have. I, am so I think I think the people that did not get the tier with the ash can, they got it. But if you have that ash can tier, I don't think you're going to get it for a while. Mm -hmm, that's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's amazing because, wow, yeah, that's awesome. I love my life. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, thank I digress. you for having me here, and hopefully I can draw next week once I get Ooh, everything yeah. done. For oh, be treated to Manny drawing again? What? Well, I did draw on Saturday night, and we did have a very good response. We had a lively chat that night. It was amazing. It was awesome. It was, fun. it was fun. I was I was playing Tony Stark at a custom party, so I apologize. <laughs> you kind of, you were one of those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was, it was it was one of those things where you know the wife was like, "We got invited." I said, "You should go ahead and go because we just moved here and you need to you need to socialize." So I bit the bullet, uh, and I, then I dressed as Tony Stark. And apparently, they don't watch Marvel movies over here because they didn't know who I was. <laughs> Even though I had an arc reactor on my chest, I was like, "For real? Like it's an arc reactor? You you don't know what that?" Anyway, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, my name is Ortiz. I want to. This is my home channel. I want to thank everybody on Digital Bullpen, the whole panel, for joining us, as well as the people in the audience who participated and watch watch the show on a weekly basis. You know, you all are amazing. The panel is amazing. I'm really humbled and and, and grateful that everybody comes and and joins us in the evening and you know chills out, relax, has a good time. You know, I hope uh, everything goes well for everybody. Uh, God bless. Uh, good night. And I'll see you all on Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hello. See you on Thursday. Excelsior. Bye-bye.